What up, what up? Here we are with another episode of the Who's Where podcast. I am your host, Chase Manyfield. We are in Brooklyn, New York, with special guest today. Max, what's good? What's going on, guys? Coming to you live from Brooklyn today. Uh, very excited, you know, for a second half of our first season. Uh, very special guest today, so I hope you guys enjoy. We got a class of 2014. Yeah. Lucy Claire Spooner. What's up? It's me. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate you coming. Definitely. What, is, I mean, what, what brings you out here to New York? Well, so right after college, I moved up here, literally a week after graduating. And um, it's nine years ago. I've been here ever since. You, uh, you just, are you from here? No. I'm from Williamsburg, Virginia. Okay. Do I walk like I'm from 757? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I walk like I'm from 757? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. On this podcast, somebody said 757 one time. Yeah, yeah. I heard it. Okay, it's not you. I'm from 859. Let's make it. I'm on the grind. I understand. I understand. Now, New York, that's the opposite of Williamsburg, Virginia, pretty much. Pretty much. So, yeah. Still on the East Coast. Okay. Still on the East Coast. Okay, that's fine. But, yeah, Little Town. To small town girl to a big town girl. So, what are you doing currently? Give everybody an update on what you're currently doing. Yes, so I am a painter. Um, I've been painting full time for about four and a half years. And before that, I was working in interior design. We can get into that at another point if you want to. Um, but yeah, so I, have, I paint pretty much all day, it is my aim. Yeah. On a beautiful, perfect day, I'd be painting all day, but there's all kinds of marketing. Other stuff to do Instagram history. I spent an hour and a half making Instagram reels, so yeah. it's not it's a full sudden, business, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's a full business. Um, I don't, did I read that you were? Did you grow up in Saudi Arabia? I did. Yeah. So um, I was born in Houston, um, and when I was two months old, um, my family, the three of us, me and my parents, went to Saudi Arabia in a small. American compound called Dharan, which is all the way on the east coast, um, and lived there for all of the 90s. Um, moved back when I was going into third grade. So talk about culture shock. Yeah. Um, Saudi Arabia, tiny, tiny little tiny compound going, and but very like very diverse in a kind of a strange way, like in a uni- like a more international kind of a way. Um, to little lights for Virginia. Which has many great things about it, but the diversity of international culture is not one Do you still like have friends out there? Uh, is it like some, digital? Is it digital friends? A little, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when I moved back, I was so young. It was before Facebook, before yeah. like AIM, yeah. um, any of that. So, but my my mom is in good touch with some people, and then. Some some friends kind of like we kind of found each other on Facebook throughout the years, but mm-hmm. never really acknowledged it. But kind of strangely enough, um, here and there. But my mom definitely keeps in touch. With me, so. That's cool. So, um, what made you decide to come from UB? I guess it's a little bit more like of a traditional uh, path from uh, William Burke to UVA. Yeah. What made you go to go to UVA? I almost always wanted to go. Really? Yeah. Um, I had a great a really wonderful girl who I looked up to a lot when I was growing up, um, and she played tennis at Virginia, and we played tennis at the same time. Well, I'm like, I don't know how much younger than her. Um, Caroline Hammond is her name, um, and we had the same tennis coach and all of that, and so I kind of had my sights set on um, playing tennis at Virginia, and then I did, I walked on. Um, to the team, I was not a star by any means, <laughs> um, like you too. But um, it was a great, you know, the, that that was kind of how I ended up yeah. really wanting to go on the more on the sporty side. And um, but it's also a great school. Is Williamsburg a big Virginia Tech group? Like, is that like a no? It's not a hokey city. No, it's like directly in between Richmond and the beach. Okay. So it's on the more on the east side. Um, I think there's a lot of cookies for sure, <laughs> um, but it's also where William is. Okay, yeah, so yeah. it's oftentimes like kids who don't want to go. Like I went to Mary's grade school, but I didn't want to go in my backyard. Yeah, it's literally across the street from my grandmother's house. Um, and so I wanted to to get. To, I wanted to go to a good school, but but like 
her away from home. So did you uh, did you major in art at UVA? Did you major no. in interior design or what? No. Was that so no. what? How did you get from UVA? You ready? You ready, to ready for the wandering path? Absolutely. Um, so I went in and was very gung ho on the on the tennis front. And I had a great uh, sports therapist who could, like totally changed my life. And um, I wanted to be a, a sports therapist. I wanted to do the same thing for somebody else. Um, and so I was, ma was majoring in psychology. And then, um, because I had taken some good classes in high school, I had li like literally fell into a French major. Mm. Um, That's how it was for me a little bit, though. Yeah. You, you took, like, AP French or something like mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah, I did, like, one class. That was actually my easiest class that you needed. That's, I, that's why I was sort of taking it, because yeah. I really liked them. Yeah. And I needed some classes that were easy to, to kind of juggle with practice schedule and all of that. I took seven years of French growing up, and I made the French three. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, still language, still language is ain't for me. <laughs> we, can, we can work on it. All right, all right. I got, I got yeah. probably we That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, so with those, so I was thinking I was going to go into sports psychology, and it just one thing led to another, um, and it was not the right path. Frankly, UVA is, is a great psychology department, but it's really, all, in my experience, it's a very research-based. Yeah. And if you want to go into being a therapist, you need um, the clinical side. At one point, I knew really well, but I was trying to make that work. And when you're a really research-based school, the, the, nobody could, who I should expect to really answer my questions on how to go down that path, which I think is... Anyway, but it all, it all worked out. Because um, my... I was somewhere after my third year, I was studying abroad in Lyon, in France, which is, again, how I yeah. landed my now, major. Now I, when I went to Paris, now, that, that, that first year I was learning in class wasn't training. Uh, no. yeah, it's a little bit different. It's a little different. <laughs> Um, you, need, you need a little more time. Little, slow down. You, need, you need a French girlfriend. Yeah, That's what you need. You need a Parisian girlfriend. Um, that, you'll go real, real quick. Um, but I, it was just one of, like, one of those beautiful moments where I was in this gorgeous old city and um, speaking with a friend of mine in the program. She's a photographer, now actually beautiful um, photographer. Mina and she's married and I can't remember her name. And now I can't remember her non married name. Anyway, first name is Mina. She's a lo lovely, beautiful girl, um, photographer. But she was telling me about these architecture classes she was, had taken at UVA. She said, You should really take it. And I had, you know, one more year. Um, and I kind of filed that away and then um, got to be signing up for classes. My, fourth year and that I just signed up for whatever random and I woke up one morning just like <gasps> I had totally forgotten me in this classes and I ran to my computer and you know actually I was reading a, this article and that's kind of what made me remember it to this like moment of oh my god I have to sign up right now and it turns out it was the last day to add classes okay. and so I ran around grounds I'm sure I was like skipping class to, to try to do this but I was like leaving notes on the door to th my this professor's office like could you please let me in I had yeah. taken too many I signed up for too many classes so I was emailing my dean dean most she's the best yeah. and she's the most best um, she. At 11.30 that night, she finagled my classes so that I dropped the ones I needed to drop, and Sonda Ilyescu, who was the professor of lessons in making, got me in to this class that I that then totally changed my life. Sonda then introduced me to Pam Black, who's a beautiful artist. Um, she and I are still very good friends, and so I took that class my spring semester. Um, and then from, that was a drawing class with Pam. Um, so really those two classes, which were both in the, in the architecture school, 
Um, those are the two that really kind of propelled me to um, keep working on my art. But at the same time, I was really wanting to go into interior design. So it all kind of works yeah. together in a way. Did you um, have a fear that like art wasn't a career? Totally. Yeah, yeah totally. So um, it's like, I got to do interior design. Yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah. I, don't I know, do. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Money, yeah. Money, yeah. Meanwhile, I'm taking no money in interior design. But <laughs> that didn't know oh, that. Okay. Was there's right. no money in interior design? <laughs> yeah. You can tell my interior designer, they <laughs> charge me all my leg that's right now. That's the problem. That's <laughs> the problem. That's crazy. But you have to pay for the stuff. And so by the time you pay for the stuff, the, pe- the person's yeah. hours. Are so she was telling me the truth, and she said most of that's for material furniture? Yes! That's so, just, that's She's getting her hourly rate. That's <laughs> There's more than I charge. I know, maybe you just should. A so so you really weren't that big into art until like your fourth year, it sounds like? Yeah, like as far as college goes. But yeah. I had my grandfather was an artist and oh, okay. she went okay. to Pratt Institute, which is around the, this like quite close to here. Well, you're actually just talking about that, but okay. Really? Know a lot about him. Yeah, we were talking about the best art schools in, in the country and uh, somebody who went to VCU said it was VCU, but apparently it's only Pratt. But that's yeah, not how it is. VCU really is. So, somebody not to be mentioned. Not to be mentioned here. <laughs> a little upset that it's not VCU, but that's okay. <laughs> um, no, VCU is actually also a really good one. But um, my grandfather went to Pratt, and um, then he, I've always been painting and drawing and making things. I was such an only child, and that's like a big way I self entertained. Lots of reading, lots of drawing by myself. Um, so it was a passion. So it was a passion, yeah. yeah. Forever, forever, ever. But um, I just never really thought about it as a career. Yeah. It was, you know, just you, you make artwork and then somebody has to buy it. And but you can charge it any more charge. Yeah, but you still have somebody else to buy it. Yeah, you can Somebody has to buy it. That's the thing. You take the market rate, you don't value, right? You take the market rate. Right. You can either... Just because you put a price <laughs> price tag on it doesn't mean it sells. Um, but then I was ended up getting an interior design um, internship in the city right after graduating. Moved up here because this New York City is really the center of the design world yeah. and our world. Um, but so there are designers everywhere, of course. But there's it's a bigger operation here. Um, and I worked for a couple years here, and then I, in interior design, and I was still drawing constantly. I was, like, drawing on the subway. I'm always late. Like, what are you drawing? Like, are you just, like, are you, like, a figures person? Yeah, or you, so like, I love to draw the figure, okay. and because I had, a, my first job was in Brooklyn, I was taking the subway from Manhattan, and always late, and it makes me very nervous to be late, even though I am always late. <laughs> um, but once you're on the subway, if you're 10 minutes late, there's nothing you can do. So... I would just sit there and draw the people in front of me just to kind of pass the time and, and get my mind off of, like, my... Were there some, some interesting drawings? Yeah. Based they, on the subway experiences? They were, they were cool and, like, you know, always trying to get somebody when he wasn't look, looking at yeah. me or she. Um, and I was getting some good feedback from the drawings. And um, it was time for me to change jobs. I'm just well, like, you can, you can, I mean, we're just on. talking. We're just conversations. Okay. So there's not no structure. Okay, so all right. You go as far as you want okay. to. Well, I, well, one thing I was going yeah. to say, like, <laughs> when I went to Paris, um, you can always have a job out there drawing people. But you still, somebody still can <laughs> buy it. That's the <laughs> thing. Just on the side of, you talking about the side of the street? Oh, yeah, they just be like this. Hey, I know. You need your, your picture drawn? Picture drawn? Yeah. Like every single button. Like they'll see me oh, tell yeah. somebody else, no. And then they'll suddenly yeah. come to me and say, do you want your picture drawn? Are anyway. you sure? After about 10, Are I was about to lose it. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, no. You I'm should good. have just said yes to everybody and they can go to Oh man, they was gonna give me for a million there. Uh, <laughs> I know what comes with that. <laughs> I mean, expect a donation. Yeah, 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 I know what comes with that. Drama. Nothing in life is free. So before we get out of your full college experience, how was your UVA experience as, as a whole? Oh, I loved UVA so much. What was your favorite part? Um, you know, honestly, I loved I loved those classes I took yep. my fourth year, um, and also had a great time. And <laughs> 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 I had a great time at Boyland. Um, but you know, I had those 
those two classes, um, I mean, of course, I loved my friends. I loved like the freedom of um, rolling out of bed at ten and and heading off to whatever it was, um, ten in the morning or one in the afternoon or whatever. Um, but the, looking back, the two classes I took that fourth year were the best, mm -hmm. um, and. My study abroad program was fantastic. My French classes were great. Um, I think probably when I was in college, I would not have listed my classes being my most favorite thing. And now I look back and I wish I were taking those classes again. <laughs> um, but I had wonderful friends too. And, um, it was a whole very, very different. It changed so much over the four years. I was so, I don't know if I've ever been quiet really in my life, but I was much more reserved my first year it took me a really, really long time to to figure things out and kind of work through stuff. And then, um, kind of like second year, I was getting, figuring, you know, feeling more comfortable in the third and fourth year. I had just a really great time, like, hit my stride. Um, Do you, are you, what's your favorite, you have a favorite restaurant out there at UVA? Is it boiling? Yeah. <laughs> I do love boiling. I'm sorry to say. Um, I have gone back to boiling as like an adult adult, and I don't recommend it. No, it's yeah. different. It's different. No, it's Michael different. Yes. Mm, I mean, what about Christian's Pizza? Is still there? Christian's is still good at 2 a.m. Yeah. That's it? That's it's not it. Good. It's not good. I never had it. Every, uh, I have never had it any other time of the day. Before midnight. Yeah. It's not good for a slice? No. Nah, I, I don't know about that. So post UVA. You, so, all right, we're talking UVA, just finished UVA, and you're thinking interior design coming out of college, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, you found a job doing interior design? Mm -hmm. I did. Right. Talk to um, us about that. Yes, I found, this was also like kind of a wonky, crazy story, a little bit, I think. Um, but I was trying to, I was starting like from ground zero trying to find an interior design job because I, it's not a major at UVA, there's really no classes on it. And I was just doing a bunch of informational interviews and just making, adding to my list of designers and emailing them and really like very scrappy trying to find yeah. a job. And I was sitting at my dining table, at breakfast table, whatever, and my roommate had the Wall Street Journal and I picked it up at the Sunday issue has that like um, off duty, um, it's called. And there was an article on this woman's beautiful bathroom in Brooklyn. Her name's Jennifer Eisenstadt. I'm like, all right, Jennifer Eisenstadt, add her to the list. And so I emailed her, and she ended up, that was my first job, and she's absolutely wonderful. She's like one of my favorite people um, ever. She lives right here in Brooklyn. I was going to say, you her address out? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't get it now. She, <laughs> she, no, I won't, I won't do that to you, Jennifer. Don't worry. Um, but she's so that was such a wonderful experience, and I was with her for two years um, and learned a lot. And then I, it was time for me to go on to a, a bigger. So what did you not like about the interior design? Well. So you went to another interior design. Yeah, program. I did. But in between, okay. I wasn't quite ready to. After I was Jennifer, I would have worked for forever and ever and ever, yeah. and she knew that, but it was time for me to work for a, a bigger firm. Yeah. Um, and rather than just jumping right to the next, I decided to see what would happen if I just only painted, okay. like only made art. Um, and I had met through friends, this guy who had done this program in the south of France years prior. So like, it's your second time back in France. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're fooling. You're actually good. I, you're I doing think some all work. Doing all of oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <Show it off. laughs> um, but I just kind of had filed this place called the Marsh Shoot School away in my mind, and I ended up going there for three months. I sublet in my apartment at the time and um, went and painted in the south of France for three months in 2016. Nice. It was absolutely wonderful. And then I came back and worked for another firm for two years. And I just, I am, you asked why I got out of the two. Well, hold on, I want to know, first of all, you tried to do like painting full time, right? Was this this trip to France, to France. or was this like, yeah. like, how was that experience as far as like trying to figure out if you can do this? So great, so I didn't go thinking I would be painting full time. Okay. Like that, I mean, I knew, 
I didn't go thinking I would come back as a full-time painter, mm -hmm. I should say. I went kind of thinking, let's just see what happens. Yeah. Can I paint? Do, mm -hmm. Does it work? You know? And um, it's a very intensive, like, you're um, learning art history, you're doing seminars, reading great literature, Flannery O'Connor and Dante yeah. and whatever else, and this very, like, full-on experience. Um, and you just make, I made a million, I made so many paintings in yeah. three months. I think like 90 or more paintings in three months, which is a lot. So, so the business of, of painting, being a full-time painter, are people contracting you like, hey, I want a portrait painted? Are you painting and going to art galleries to sell them? Or how, how does that kind of work? So, for the last, so it's been four and a half years that I've, I've been full time. Okay. But even before that, when I was working for a firm, I was starting, and I came, I'd come back from France, I was working for a different firm, and people, I was posting my artwork online, yeah. on my website, on my Instagram, and people were starting to ask, like, hey, could you, I saw you painted your dog, could you paint my dog? I see, like, or they were interested in something yeah. that I had painted of my own volition. And I was like, oh, people do want to buy it. This is, this is kind of great. And so they do, they'll reach out now and get lots of commissions. So I have, I have different kind of income streams. Okay. Um, one is like commissions where people ask like dog or house or yeah. kids, wedding, whatever. Um, another is what I call studio works, paintings that I just make of my, of my own volition. I mean, it's like equity. You know, if you create it, it's intellectual property. So however many more you create, I mean, so technically it's inventory. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Inventory. yeah. So yeah. You can always sell it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I can see. So you say you make like 90 in three months. That's a lot. That was a lot. That was a lot. You're like a little way in That was a lot. That was a lot. That was a lot. That's a good. That is, I have never, ever had, I have never had that comparison. That's how I'm going to start that YouTube clip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, well, that's pretty cool. So you, when you came out, um, you know, I didn't mention Instagram, but when you came out, at least I know a little bit older than you, but when we came out of college, the internet still wasn't that big, you know, even Reels within there, TikTok, all that stuff. Yeah. How have you, have you used that a lot to kind of like build your brand? Is that like Instagram, helping, hurting? Instagram, totally. Okay. Um, I mean, Instagram, without Instagram, I don't think I would be around. I mean, it's really yeah. crazy. I kind of shudder at the thought of like my account shut down. Say it, <laughs> um, but yeah, reels and stuff. I'll do, I'll do. It's I have one woman who's like a friend who helps me now, so I can't really say that I'm a fully a, a one woman show. Um, but I like any of the reels or any of all of that. It takes so much time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's ways you, know, you get better at it over time or whatever. But I just frankly I don't really have the time to. Yeah. to invest in it, um, even though I know it can help your algorithm or whatever else. But, um, yeah, like I do that, I'm, I know I should have a TikTok. I technically have a TikTok. I have posted videos on it, but I'm not on there a lot. It's just a lot of time, and I need to paint. Like, my <laughs> yeah. job is not my yeah, job is work. not to, like, yeah. write emails uh, and stuff. Like, marketing like, studio. Yes, <laughs> I know. I need to paint. I need to, like, be in the studio. So... That's a juggle. That's a that's a deadline act for sure. It's a true entrepreneur for sure. Yeah. Like, trying to balance between like the actual product or the actual service. Yeah. To the actual sales. Yeah. But sometimes the product is the sales. Yeah. So how do you balance that? All you know the, what I'm saying? All, like, yeah. You're, you're going. To, you look like you, you sound like you're saying it's more so me focusing on my product because without my product, I have nothing to sell. Right. But without but, marketing, there's no who who knows that it's there. So yeah, it's a real. Balancing act. I think I've kind of figured it out. I do mornings. I'm not a morning person, so mornings are not very productive. I do like the computer work kind of side yeah. in the mornings, and then I paint. Um, I paint the things, um, and that is a good balance for now. Eventually, I think I'll start outsourcing some things. But oh, yeah, we'll yeah. see. You got to sell a few more paintings before yeah. I do that. Yeah, let somebody else worry about you know conducting yeah. trains out of the station. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about this. Uh, this value, this pricing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know this one. I want to know this. 
<laughs> so where do you come up with the idea of how much how your time is worth? How to price. Yeah, your, mm-hmm. well, your time is, I'm going to break it down for all the right, audience. All right, okay. Right? okay. This right. is your time, right. right? This is your time. This is your, what you consider to be your masterpiece, right, in a single moment. Um, then how do you put a value on that? And does, I guess, let's start with that and then I got some more questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I received some very good advice when I was first starting out. Okay. Um, from a painter. And he said, you probably have three prices in your mind. One is going to, you know, high, middle, low, obviously. He's like, one is probably going to be too high and you're cheating the customer. One is too low and you're cheating yourself. So pick the middle one. And then as you go and grow and evolve and, and get more of a name for yourself or whatever, your time is worth more to you, et cetera, et cetera, then that chain, that, that will go up. Um, but that was the best piece of advice I ever received. And it's true. If you're thinking, you know, oh, I could probably get this amount. Yeah. But you then you don't really feel so good about that. It's like kind of you get. I, feel good. I know, yeah, yeah, I yeah. know, I know. But then so maybe that's maybe that's your middle number then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel good. But if I get it for ten. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel okay. Maybe present company accepted. But most people feel like a little bit icky. And then, but if you sell it for too low, then that is a, that's like a worse yeah. feeling, frankly. Um, and so, like, that kind of Goldilocks bit of fun. How do you take into account, like, size, materials, um, whatever you're using, like, those are the type of things to come up with pricing? Yeah, I mean, materials is, can be a bit tricky. Um, like, Art Basel, they, you got people selling, like, bananas <laughs> taped to the wall. I know. Okay. Like, We're not talking art basil here <laughs> in this in this studio. We, we don't know. have an art basil girl here. You told us it's coming close. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. Yeah. We'll see. You you have, see. Do you have a connection for me? Uh, maybe. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll see. Stop. We'll get you somewhere. This, this podcast is pretty big. Off my head. Maybe we can claim it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it out there. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of what I do are watercolors, and the, the materials are like pretty negligible to be quite honest. I mean, over of course it adds up yeah. over time, but it's not. Oil painting is more expensive in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with that, I kind of, I just think, honestly, it's arbitrary. Yeah. Like that's the big secret. Yeah. It's totally arbitrary, the prices. What about it's, size? Like? Yeah, I do based on size. And I kind of, when I first started and I just, continued on this way. I was like, okay, this is like a nine by twelve and which is just a standard size. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, this here's my like my middle price that I'm comfortable with, like I just talked about. And then based on like if it's a little bit bigger, I charge a little bit more. Yeah. If it's a little bit smaller, I charge a little bit less. And I've just kept that up. Like a little bit bigger is a little bit more. Yeah. It's like a, it's kind of a I don't really do it by percentages. That's interesting. You know, one thing that I'm out here raising, I'm raising capital for my company right now, and I was like putting a valuation on my company, and one of my like one of the like founders that I was using as a mentor, they were like, take the valuation off, and you might you have more success in selling it if you let them tell you what the value is oh, from their mind. Interesting. How's that going? Well, it's better than it was, was when I had the price tag. Okay. <laughs> so I had the price tag like extremely high because it's my yeah, you know, it's situation, baby. right? Yeah. So when I hear what other people are coming back with, I'm like, oh, I can make it like that work mm-hmm. type situation. So have you ever thought about anything like that? This no. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to put a price tag. No. Yeah. <laughs> this is my price. Well, yeah. you know, it's a little different, right? Because it's a tangible yeah, yeah, object. Um, and what. I think what's tough is that people a lot of times have absolutely no mm-hmm. idea and it makes them uncomfortable mm-hmm. for for somebody for me to say like like I have been in a position where I think I saw like a street artist mm-hmm. and I'm like how much is this and he's like you name your price and I was like I can't name my price like I don't it, it was when I first went to the city and I'm like mm-hmm. I'm always on my to-do list yeah. to list on more online platforms because it's just more just eyes. another plate, like yeah, Amazon. more eyes, yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. But they're often, it's often like, 
Have you ever tried to buy art on an online platform? I've it's so overwhelming. I've been wanting to invest in more more art because they said you can put any value you want yeah. on it for your taxes. You can. Yep. Oh. Art is a, a big conspiracy theory. Art is just a way yeah. to dodge money. That's true. So I have a couple of pieces that will be showing up on my tax returns. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a deduction. Yeah, that's a loss. My, my <laughs> that's a loss. valuation. Yeah. Yeah. There so, you go. No, that's um, definitely that's definitely dope. So, do you still have any fears? I know you talked about like you know having some fears out of college as far as sustainability and uh, like being a full time artist. Yeah. Do you still have any of those fears? Um. And no, I mean, like, it's different when you work for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I was working for, when I had a salary job, I had a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And I knew even if I got sick, if my, you know, broke my arm or whatever, um, have family emergency, I in. was still going to get a check. Yeah. Yeah. I might not get, like, a bonus at the end of the year, but I didn't really get that anyway. Yeah. That's more of a finance <laughs> thing, I think. Um but now it's like I don't I know what I made last year, but I don't know what I'm gonna make this week. Yeah, and right. if I get hurt or you know, I had a, a family emergency last year and I took two months off and so I didn't make any money for two months. Wow. And I mean, you know, it kinda rolls in and I have contingency plans yeah. and I have savings for that very reason and, and all of that, but it's kind of a different thing of I've figured it out, in yeah. other words. It's yeah. it's not a fear anymore. Um but it took a while of rather than kind of looking. Uh, it's like an inverse of how it, like you've always learned how to spend. It's like when you have a paycheck, you're spending from like like from the future. You look at yeah. Different now. Yes, totally. Okay. And and now it's like okay, what do I what have I saved and how. Like what? Are, what are my projections? But what if? And like the the emergency kind of thing. So it's like yeah. you're just yeah. falling. That's extreme. But um, it's like what? What if? Like even art fairs, different. But I might be projecting to make X amount in a weekend at an art fair, mm -hmm. and then there's a hurricane. This happened. Yeah. And for two two fairs in the last year, there it was. They were rained out, and oh, wow. so that's. There's no, they don't yeah, like yeah. give you. There's no paycheck or anything from that. So I was just, you know, one thing that really, um, what I'm kind of hearing from you is like what I kind of experienced when I got into business was that I removed the fear. The uncertainty was actually less because I knew how to make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Versus yeah. when I was getting paid a check, I just yeah. thought this is the only way to make yeah, money. Right. So. Yeah. And now, like you know, if I need to push more for instance like when the two fairs fell through very last minute um and two at two different times of the year i knew i needed to do another push so i yeah. sent more emails i like ramped it up on instagram yeah. i had like it was um last october there was a hurricane in williamsburg and i was supposed to have this art show and show was rained out and so I was at my mom's house and we just had a little what we call a front porch fair and so I set up my work on the front porch and invited you know sent out an email to everybody who I know in Williamsburg yeah. and they came in and shopped on the front porch rather, cool. rather than having it and that started in COVID actually that's really where I yeah. I was one year into to working for myself and COVID hit, and COVID hit. And did people buy more art then? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, they did yeah. because they were sitting in on their sofas at home, I mean, looking, like, walls. Walls. Yes, yep. looking at their blank walls. And I, 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 I think I got my piece during COVID actually too. Yeah, it's like probably. Yeah, yeah. You, you work from were, home, you want to dress up your office a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and you weren't spending on going out to eat or whatever. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, it was a really difficult time for I know a lot of people, but yeah. others booming. Yeah. So going off that, that thing, what is what is a growth plan for you? Is it to become more of a Household name, so your pieces sell more. Is it an inventory game? How do how do you grow in the art business or just in your business? Yeah, um, interesting. This is this is a good question, Matt. Um, so you participate? I so right now, really, where I'd like to go growth wise is um, right now. I do so many commissions, which is great. Yeah. Um, but a commission is something that someone else has asked me to do for yeah. them. 
and you'd kind of always rather do what you want to do, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I would love to, right now commissions are like 60% and then art fairs and like what I call studio work is like 40% of my income. And I would love to swap that and, and kind of have, yeah. yeah. Um, or keep it, actually I should say, it's fine to keep it like a big percentage, but I want, I need to increase my rates and so mm -hmm. I'm, theoretically right. making fewer paintings for more um because if you know if, if it's a special request that's like yeah. Yeah. so um there's that and um yeah and i and then hopefully the grand scheme is to have fewer like quantity of commissions and then that would give me more time to make the studio do it Get back, to, right. get back to this business of the of uh, of art. Can you talk about appreciation? I can't. You can't I, talk about I don't. I don't know. I don't know much. Can I, just, can I can just say whatever for my pieces. Like for your pieces, I, do you do you like? So the longer the piece has been around, would you say it's worth more, or if it's worth less? Because like the, the Picasso's and the Van I don't think it can be worth less. Yeah, the Picasso's and the Van Gogh's, you know what I'm saying? Like, it seems like when people die and stuff, it like, they became... Yeah, they became always. Lost. That's just always. a game. Of, they can never make another one. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. 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 But yeah. like, so yours has been in the inventory for longer. That seems like that should be on sale. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think oh, I man. should not hire you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're just trying to understand the business. From, oh, like, man. If it was a tomato, you know what I'm saying? It would be on sale. Yeah, like, so from our perspective, here. you're never going to drop your price. <laughs> no. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you never drop your price, but will you make it higher? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, every cool. year. So every year. Every year up. it goes up. Right. Yeah. Any piece. So buy, awesome buy living. quick. Yeah. Buy quick. You yeah. get best deal. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's what you're selling for. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So as soon as she posts, you got to buy it. This is the best price you get. Buy it. Buy it. If you don't maybe. get it now, you just yeah, wait you for a year, it's going to be up more. That's awesome. Um. So now, you now you're back in the running for my work. All right, back. <laughs> what would you tell someone who is interested in doing art full time? Mm -hmm. um, they have the same concerns you may have had, mm -hmm. um, and you know they may be thinking about I may want to be an interior designer or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you? What would you suggest to that person that's in school? They might have a handle called Mance Watercolor, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. Like that. They just put an application to work for Max. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're really trying to change their career goals right now. <laughs> like, what would you tell that person uh, about? You know what you would do if you were in that same position, and uh, how they should best move, maneuver themselves yeah. to get to that. Yeah. So. I mean, honestly, I I have learned so much since in get my path to where I am. Um, but I don't know that I would really have changed that much. Um, I don't think I would go back and and study art in college. Um, take some classes if you want. That's great. Um, but the most important part to me, honestly, in the business of art, is the marketing side. Yeah. Like you have to, you have to have the product. You have to have confidence in your in your abilities and and the, um, you know style, as they say. You know that's like your own. But and it's, in other words, like the product has to be there. You can't kind of get around that too much. But a lot, so much of it is marketing. Yeah. Is that what you're saying right now? Or most of the highest paid popular artists and I don't even know who they are today, mm -hmm. but are they the best marketers as well? Yeah, and a lot of them are working for, um, I mean, the like the art is also good, but there's yeah. a lot of talent in the world. And um, they, oh, like the big, there's, you know, different kind of ways to look at the art world. There's like me, who I don't have a gal I don't have gallery representation, so yeah. do I really want it, like maybe eventually down the line. Galleries take 50% of just it's, 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 it's a lot. It's lot. They do a lot for you, but you have to, I like the marketing side. Like that. That, I know. They do a lot. The gallery, they just have open warehouse. <laughs> I know. But, you know, they, they market for okay, you. They you. ship yeah. it for you. They uh, stretch okay. it for you. They do, or theory, you know, whoever, maybe they frame it for you, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So all okay. of, like the admin stuff that it's I'm doing yeah, now, exactly. they do. But you know what? I like, I like the marketing side. I like knowing who I'm selling to and who, who's bought my work and all of that. And that go, really goes by the way of the gallery. But like the really big artists now, yeah. they have the galleries to do that marketing side for them and the galleries to so they work with, have their own name yeah. 
credibility wise and all of that. But that's kind of, that's like up here. I'm not really messing with that. Um, but a lot of it is, is just consistency and, you know, like you're a brand. I'm a brand. So I show my face. I show my, you know, I, I am the one who does my Instagram and I'm kind of like my like wonky self on there. And I, I show the behind the scenes and, yeah. and all of that too. So um, that, it kind of, it works and I remind people when they need to be putting in orders for Christmas, which is coming up. Um, and, and all of that. That's like, that's yeah. the main side. It's like, make a lot of work too. Like get, get your, have a, have a good practice and don't lose that side yeah. of it. But if you really want to be selling, go to market. We're going to get a commission piece of this shot right here. All right. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where can people where can people meet meet you uh, or or not meet you reach you, reach you. Um, where do where do you want them to go to like find your stuff? Seems like it's Instagram, TikTok, but Instagram, not really TikTok. Yeah. Okay, not TikTok. Don't go to TikTok. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can. I haven't been on there in a long time. Um, my Instagram. Is What's your handle? Lucy Claire Spooner okay. artist, and there's no I in Claire. Um. Yeah, on my website, my full name, LucyFishman.com. It's um, good real estate. It's good digital real estate. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Can't mouthful. Say. It's mouthful. But what about email? You got email you want to put up there? LucyClaresFood or Gmail. There you go. Sure. <laughs> <That's the best laughs> email email. So, so they can know what to find. That's where they're going to reach you at. Uh, we appreciate you being on here. We're going to do one thing before we close. Okay. Uh, we're going to do my podcast, our podcast questions. So we do rapid fire questions. Okay. Just first thing that comes to mind is this or that. Okay. You choose and go okay. from there. All right. All right. All right. All right. So hotels or Airbnbs? Airbnb. Listen to books or read books? Read. Go to the movies or watch Netflix? Netflix. Cables or, cable or stream? Stream. IG stories or IG posts? For your marketing? Uh, stories. All right. Watch the news or read the news? Read. Would you rather start a podcast or write a book? Book. Apple or Android? Apple. Detroit pizza or New York pizza? I've never had Detroit. So it's New York. New York. And then our favorite one for this, uh, for our, for our uh, podcast <laughs> is, if you were moving, would you hire a moving company <laughs> or would you get your friends to help you move? I guess it might be the same for you, though. I think it's the same. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> leave it at that. All right, man. Well, we appreciate you, Claire. It was great to have you on Thank here. You. Thank you. So that's it. Thank yeah. You. All right. Thanks, guys.